Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my first impression of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So I watched the pilot episode over the weekend. So now, this is the one Star Trek series that I have been looking forward to out of all the new Star Treks. Well, not, that's not really true. When I first heard about Star Trek Discovery, I was very excited for that series until I actually watched it. So this is the, the next series that I was most excited to watch, uh, was Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Over all the other ones like Picard and uh, Prodigy and Lower Decks and uh, things like that. And this is also the last stop for me when it comes to Star Trek. So Picard Season 3 supposedly, from what I've heard, is supposed to be the final season for Star Trek Picard. Because I guess Patrick Stewart, you know, he's not a young guy anymore and probably doesn't want to go past season three. And I think that's why they're bringing back all the TNG cast for one last hurrah in that season. And that's it. It's done. I have no interest in Lower Decks. I watched a few episodes. I thought it was stupid. Never watched it again. I watched a couple episodes of Prodigy. It didn't really do it for me. I'm not into that Clone War, Star Wars, the Clone Wars style of animation, things like that. And it's kind of like a kid's show anyway. It's kind of dumbed down. So I, 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 that didn't do it for me either. This was the only one that's left that um, I have any interest in watching. Uh, any of the other shows that were announced, I, I don't care about. Like the Section 31, supposedly that was going to be a thing. I have no interest in seeing it. Anything else like that, I don't care. So this is the last straw. So I watched the... Uh, so this is like... A, I watched a lot of Star Trek this weekend. On uh, Thursday night, I watched uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, the new high-definition director's cut that uh, was exclusive to Paramount+. Plus. Paramount+, Plus said, you can try it out for seven, seven days for free. So I signed up, watched uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, then in the morning, cancelled it. And then I uh, watched Strange New Worlds in the afternoon. And then uh, later on that night, I uh, watched Star Trek Picard, the season finale. And then watched Strange New Worlds again. So I watched it twice. So I'll talk about some of the things I like. So right off the bat, um, again, like these new Star Trek shows, like the special effects are, they look really good. So there's always that. Uh, I think the, the actor that plays uh, Captain Pike... I think, believe his name is Anson Mount. Very good in the role. He's a very good captain. Uh, he really fits the part. And he, he kind of resembles Jeffrey Hunter vaguely a little bit, you know, with the blue eyes and things like that. So I think he's a lot better Captain Pike than the, the Captain Pike we got in the Kelvin universe. I think he's a little bit closer to that, to Jeffrey Hunter's look. And um, they're, they're more, there's more of a resemblance there. And he just has that more of a captain commanding presence so he doesn't he's a very good captain pike um the look of the show is a lot closer to the original series and uh than what discovery was now that still there's quite a gulf between the two but um it, it, at least it feels a little bit closer to that universe this show and uh the other thing i like is they're gone back to the episodic storytelling which I think has been kind of a ball and chain on the new Star Trek series because where they take basically one storyline and stretch it out over 10 episodes, if that storyline sucks, all the 10 episodes basically suck. Uh, that's the, the problem with that. And now if you have each episode like an individual story and then the next episode is a new story with a few two-parters or three-parters thrown in there or whatever, uh, you have the potential for some gems to get in there. Uh, because that was one of the things like Voyager and Enterprise for when we're talking 90s Trek, those were like the two weak links. Like I liked Voyager, like especially Enterprise was like the worst of the 90s Trek. Like I liked Voyager a lot more, but I found Voyager kind of had a lot of boring episodes. But where it was episodic, you got some really nice gems in there. In there, there are some very well done, very well written, very good Voyager episodes. And the same thing with Enterprise. Uh, you, you, they got a few gems in there that are very solid, very good episodes. And so with them doing that with this new show, my hope is you'll get gems in there like that. So I like that. 
Uh, now, as far as the, the, the other thing is, I like the design of the Enterprise for this, although I wish it was closer to how the Enterprise looked in the original series. Like, the more, the closer they get to the look of the original series, the more I would like this show. But, I mean, it is fairly close. Uh, now, having said that, after wa now, when I watched the high-definition version of Star Trek The Motion Picture at the, 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 day, the day before... That Enterprise, that refit Enterprise in high definition where you could see so much detail in there, it looks beautiful. It is like an amazing looking ship. And then seeing this one the next day right after, this one looks really bad <laughs> compared. And I don't know if it's really the design or just the way to shot it's shot or something. Like you like the like the one thing about the motion picture, they really took their time. And I know people complain it's a slow moving film, but man, they really took their time in that movie to show off that model. And it looks absolutely gorgeous like it's bright with the pearl and it's all lit up and everything where this enterprise is like it's in a it's all dark and you can't really get to see the details of the ship it's like all in shadow and they don't take their time like they just fly the shuttle quick up to it and pike beams out beams onto the onto the ship but there was they should have at least had some moment to kind of like at least show off this new enterprise a little bit so we can see more details of it um, so as for the episode itself, so the, the episode is a very straightforward run of the mill, um, Star Trek episode. Um, so you have like the, the classic kind of like generic Star Trek aliens where they have like either a piece on their forehead or a piece on their nose that makes them look a little bit alien. And then they have some kind of a problem with their society that kind of, that, that's an allegory to our own. And so the enterprise shows up and they have to somehow fix that problem in their society. So it's very much in the vein of TNG, TOS, as, as far as that goes. So very straight run the mill. So it was kind of refreshing to see that. Haven't seen it in a while in modern Trek. Uh, now, some of the things that I didn't uh, like about the, the show was, again, it's, and it, it it's just like, I, I, I don't know why they do it, but it's something that's with a lot of modern TV. It's the weird dialogue. That's in this new Star Trek. And I want to say the characters talk like it's modern day and not the future. But if you listen, not even modern day people don't even really talk like that in real life. Um, and I was trying to think about it. like It was something I couldn't put my finger on. But like some examples. Okay, so spoiler warning. I'm going to get into some spoilers. Like they have to go down on this planet. So they have to disguise themselves as the, as the inhabitants of the planet. So in the old show or whatever, they would just kind of make some kind of a disguise or do some altered surgery like they did on TNG. So they would look like the aliens then go down. But in this one, they actually alter their genome. So they actually turn them into the aliens temporarily and then send them down on the planet. So then they can pass like retinal scans, DNA tests and all that stuff. So, um, Nurse Chapel has developed, devised the system that can do this with multiple injections. So they're sitting there and then they ask, oh, well, and then uh, Dr. Mabenga tells them, okay, Nurse Chapel is going to perform the seizure. She holds it up and she's like all like cocky looking and says, well, I'm going to be messing with your genome or something to that effect. But the way the line to deliver, it's like, and then at the end, when Pike gives the classic uh, line, you know, we're going to seek out new life and new civilizations, blah, 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 blah. And then Uhura looks at him and goes, oh, cool. Like that kind of dialogue. I was thinking about it, like, why, where, how, like, you would never seen stuff like that on the older Trek, like 90s Trek, stuff like that. But you see it in the modern Trek, and I was trying to think about it, like, what is it about this dialogue? And, and I couldn't put my finger on it, but it's, and it, and it popped into my mind what it is. It's CW dialogue. That's how characters talk on the CW superhero shows. The Flash. Um, you know, Batwoman, uh, Arrow, when you watch those shows, that's how the characters talk and act. So this has like CW dialogue writing in it, this new Star Trek. That's the best way I can put it. And it's one of the things I wish they would just stop and phase it out. Um, so there's that. Um, the other thing about the show, now, I already did a video about the, the race swapping of, uh, uh, Robert April and and I did a video on that and, and to me that change I don't care about it, it doesn't bother me but now there's an Asian character in the transporter room 
who is, I guess, a young Commander Kyle, who was the transporter chief on the TOS of when Kirk was doing his five-year mission. But on that, now I don't know, maybe it's not even the same character. Maybe they just have the same name. But people are talking like it is the same character. So on TOS, he was a blonde white guy and a lot bigger <laughs> than the little Asian young guy that's in the new show. So how now, why would you do that race swap if it is the same character? It doesn't make sense. Okay, now you can't use the, the loophole while the animated series wasn't canon and all this kind of stuff. So I could get the Robert April change. But this one makes no sense because TOS is very much canon. And that character appeared in multiple TOS episodes and in one of the films. So how did he go? How did this guy, that cadet, start out as a young transporter chief, then morph into a white guy 10 years down the road? So it's like a pointless change when just make up a new character. Because it had the exact same actor on the show. And then there's no like continuity or canon violations or like things that don't make sense. Just he's a new character. He's some other guy. He's a new guy. This, the commander Kyle that you seen, he didn't come on the ship until Kirk took over. This was the guy that was here when Pike was uh, in command. So stuff like that. Like th that doesn't make any sense. Just kind of irritates me. Um, but so far, I think the good of what I've seen in this first episode, the good outweighs the bad. So I'm going to give this show at least the first season before I really make up my mind if um, I'm going to like it or not. And um, just to see where they go with the stories and things like that. Because the show looks really good. It looks a lot closer to the original series. And to me, this feels like a reboot of the original series. And I almost wish they would just come out and say that's what it is. Because it feels like that's what it is. This is like a reboot of TOS. This is a TOS reboot. It doesn't really feel like a prequel, even though it's supposed to be a prequel. It feels more like a reboot or a reimagining of TOS to me. And as far as the rest of the cast, like, um, I like the, uh, the girl they have that plays... Number one, I think she's really good. Like I said, uh, the captain is really good. I really like the girl that plays the young Uhura, uh, except for that one stupid line at the end where she says, oh, cool, because of the CW dialogue. But for the rest of the episode, I really like her as Uhura. Um, and she plays like a very likable character. And that's another thing that's been bogging a lot of modern Trek down is I, I find the way they write the characters they're not likable. The way this character is presented and interacts with people she's very likable i like her right away and uh some of the other characters i don't know about yet you got the girl who has the last name as khan khan nunian singh and i forget she's lan nunian singh so is this a uh, relative uh descendant of khan nunian singh or are they gonna uh, uh they didn't touch upon it in the uh in this episode but is that something that's going to be a thing later on so this, this character might be... They spend a lot of time on this character in this first episode, so... They, uh... The character might be important to the series, I'm guessing, as the show goes on. And, uh, so there's probably some more characters that, uh... You know, will come out that, that they haven't really dealt with yet. Also, I like the, the guy who plays Dr. Mabenga. And I actually like the idea that they use the character of Dr. Mabenga. And people say they have a problem with it. Well, then that means that he's he ends up being underneath McCoy later on in the series because McCoy ends up being the chief medical officer of the ship. Now, when you watch TOS, Dr. Mabenga only made like a few appearances. And I always got the impression he wasn't a regular crew member of the ship. He was kind of like on and off the ship. And he wasn't a subordinate of McCoy. He was there because... It was usually, I think in one case it was because Spock had some problems going on. And he is a Vulcan specialist. So then the, it makes sense. So he would have been the chief medical officer during Pike's command. And he would have left after Kirk took over and went and done an internship on Vulcan somewhere. And because now he's almost like a general practitioner, if you think of it that way. And then he's going to go off and he's going to just uh, go and specialize in Vulcan medicine. So he's going to be a Vulcan specialist because that's what he was on the original series. So if you think about it this way, yes, McCoy's in charge and it's his office and he's like the, the general practitioner of the of the ship. But Dr. Mabenga was a Vulcan specialist. So he specialized just in Vulcan medicine. 
So, so for me, there's no conflict there. Conflict there, and I like the actor because he was uh, Jamis on uh, the new Dune movie, and I, I think he did a good job. So I like him. And uh, so, so far, this has been very a lot better than a lot of the truck that's come before it so far. So it's a lot better right off the bat than Discovery was, and it's a lot better right off the bat than Picard was. But now those shows set the bar pretty low, so it's not it's easy to clear that bar. So we'll see what it happens going forward. Um, now, if the show really starts to blow chunks and after season two, I just can't get into it. Like, cause I gave discovery the first uh, season. I stuck with it through season one, uh, partway through season two. And then I just have no desire to watch it no more. So then if this happens with this one and then Picard's over, um, then that's it for me. I'm out. I'm out, I'm out of trick. I'm done. And, uh, now, the other thing I have to say, and I'm not sure about this yet, is I'm not sure about this version of Spock. Um, because I, I, I don't like, and I, I don't know why they keep doing this, just trying to give Spock a romance. I, I really, that really annoys me. And I, they did they did that in the Kelvin timeline, like having him in a Uhura hookup. I thought it was so stupid. Like in the original series, like Spock never really showed that desire. And Vulcans, if they do get married, it's for very logical reasons is why they pick their mates. And then they only have to get laid once every seven years. That's the whole point of the Pond Far thing. But this was portrayed like a very human uh, relationship and very almost like almost too emotional for Vulcans. And then the other thing, Vulcans, they don't kiss on the mouth. They make out with their fingers. <laughs> That's like pre-established canon. So I, I'm not sure about this version of Spock yet. And the other thing that kind of annoys me, this is like a minor nitpick, but it does annoy me is it looks like his hair is always kind of messy. <laughs> this new Spock, it's like he just rolled out of bed and went down to, uh, and started his his shift on the Enterprise, uh, you know, where, so that, and I mean, that's a minor thing, but still there. So I'm not sure about this version of Spock. I have to give a few episodes. And um, so we'll see how this plays out, but I'll at least give it one season. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.